Praise the Lord Jesus, everyone. We're so happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time to give glory to his name and to, to worship him. Greetings to our Chief Apostle Prophetess Randall, Pastor Randall, Bishop McKay, all the ministers in their respective places, to our moderate evangelist James and to all the saints of God everywhere. It's just a just lift your hands where you are and just give God a praise. Just wave your hands and worship and let the enemy know this morning that you are still worshiping your God. Despite what the enemy is saying, we still have a praise for God. We still have a worship. We still have a word of God in our mouth. And today we want to open up our mouth and give God a hallelujah. Give him a praise. Give him a shout. Let, let somebody know that you are still standing on the side of God. This morning, we just want to give God thanks because when we look at the news and we look at what is happening around us, we have to give God praise. We have to say, Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we thank you. We have to have gratitude that God has remembered us despite all that is going on. And this morning, glory to God. This morning, we want to celebrate the goodness of Jesus. We want to pray for all all of God's people everywhere because there is no, you know, in time past, people say they'll go to X place or Y place. There is no such option anymore. People have to trust God wherever they are. People have to serve God and believe in the word of God and to use the weapons of our warfare wherever they are because the entire globe is facing the same challenge this morning. So we want to just one more time to raise those hands and give God praise. Let him let him hear your voice. Let him know that you are depending on him this morning. Hallelujah. And that there is no other help that you know. Father, in the name of Jesus, no, no, we come no, to you right now. Thank you, Lord. We come with a praise in our lips. We come with Glory amen, with a joy Glory in our hearts. We come with a determination, Lord, to call upon your name. Thank you, We Jesus. come with a determination to fill up the atmosphere with praises due to the most high God. Lord, you see your people right now near and far in this space. Lord, we pray for everyone who is tuned into this um, Zoom platform right now, and even those who are watching along with them. We pray for all the people of God. We pray that you would cover us under your blood. We pray that the anointing of God, Ashakoya Masanda, will be Lord. upon us this morning. Lord, we need your protection this morning from every disease. We need your protection from every plan of the enemy, from every sickness. We need your protection, Lord, from fear, for fear has torment. Lord, we thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Lord, as your people raise their hands to you right now, as they look to you, Lord, with an expectation that you will deliver. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to come into our presence right now. Lord, it's not by any good that we have done. It's not because... We are in this special one. It's because of your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. It's because, Lord, of your loving kindness. It's because mm -hmm. you remember your people, even, even in the middle of our faults and our mistakes. Lord, you still remember us. And Father God, we come to you this morning, bowing down to you. Bowing down to your word. Bowing yes. down to your presence. Bowing down to your name, Lord. And yes. saying to you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For remembering us. Lord, we give you praise. Some of just clap your hands and give the Lord a praise wherever you are. For he is good and his mercies endure it forever. Praise God. You know, this morning we just want to continue along the same theme. Amen. That we have been doing. Let me just praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to ask the moderator to allow me to share my screen. Bishop, unmute your mic, please. Uh, Bishop, you are muted. 
Uh, Bishop, you are muted. We're not hearing you. Yes, are you hearing me now? Yes, we are, sir. Bless. Thank you. And are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. I'm assuming you don't want to go in presentation mode. All right, that's correct, right? Give God praise. You know, we have to, we have to um, get used to the technology as we as we are in this phase. But we want to give God glory this morning. I, I just want to talk to you for a few moments about the name of Jesus. And my main text is coming from 1 Samuel 17, verses 45 to 47. And we want to, this morning, the theme is come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. We have so many enemies this morning, but you know, we have different different formulas and different things that people are trying. But this morning, I wanted to take us back to the name of Jesus, the powerful name, the awesome name, the miracle working name. And I want to use that in my text this morning, First Samuel 17, 45 to 47. You know the story well. It's the story with David and the Philistine Goliath. And God's people were being embarrassed, being ridiculed, were under threat from the wicked enemy, from the Philistines, an awesome enemy. And there was fear in the camp. And David, not a man at the time who was, you know, seen to be a warrior in the eyes of men, but in the eyes of God, he was a warrior. And so David was come face to face with the enemy of God's people. Like how oh, we are face to face this morning against so many enemies attacking our minds, our bodies, our homes, every area of our life, every area you can think of, we have been attacked by the enemy. And David then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. This is David talking, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, unto the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. You see that David speak confidently and said, listen, I know you're a strong enemy. I know you have your weapons sword, spear, and shield. And you also have language which is intimidatory. You know, he promised that he would feed the carcass of David to the birds. He was very out of order. And when speaking to David, he, he was basically trying to put fear and trembling in David. But David said, I am coming to thee in the name of the Lord mm -hmm. of hosts. Emphasis on the name. I know I, heard, I hear your voice, enemy. I see your manifestation, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And you know, Goliath, represent is a type and a shadow of a strong enemy, strong provocation, agent of fear and intimidation and evil pride. The enemy, you know, when they are so strong before us, it seems impossible. Goliath also represents a disregard for the most high God. They speak, your enemies will try to ridicule your God, try to make you look small in the eyes of others because of your service and your trust in God. But light also represents a challenge, hallelujah, to the power of God. Anybody feeling that challenge this morning? But we know when we have the name of Jesus, we will triumph over these challenges. And Goliath also represents a clear and present danger to the safety and the peace of God's people. Every enemy that we face this morning, amen, is strong, provocative, try to drive fear and intimidation into our minds. Sometimes it's a sickness try to torment our minds that we will not be delivered. Sometimes it's oppression and depression. Sometimes it's the word of the wicked. Their, their, their words are stout and threatening. And sometimes they show such disregard for the power of God. And they present a danger to our safety and peace of mind. But this morning we want to be like David. We want to come against the enemy in the name of the Lord. And this name, the name that has come from far, the same God of the Old Testament is Jesus in the New Testament. His name represents his character, who he is, his presence, he's there, his power, his power is above all others, his authority. 
when he speaks, when he acts, no one can question, no one can reverse, no one can challenge his power. So when we call the name of Jesus, we are not just saying it because we have words in our mouth, but we are looking for him to come to our defense. We're looking for him to strengthen our, our resolve. We're looking for him to help us in our time of trouble. And so when we use the name of Jesus, we're coming against every sickness in the name of Jesus. We're coming against every depression in the name of Jesus. We're coming against the spirit of anxiety in the name of Jesus. We're using the name of Jesus against every disease. You know them. They're, you might be affected by one right now. Call it and say, I come against you, you disease in the name of Jesus. We come against poverty. You're coming against me, but I come to you. As David said to Goliath, I come to you in the name of the Lord, my God. We use the name of Jesus to come against failure and sadness, so much sadness and mental torture. We use the name of Jesus to come against every provoking force that will want us to sin against our God. We also come against all attacks and subtleness of the enemy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we come against confusion and lukewarmness and the spirit of backsliding and anger. So many people are stepping back in this pandemic, but in the name of Jesus, we come against that spirit Right now that your people, God, will be on fire for him. We want to be fired up for God because the enemy loves when we are lukewarm and cold. But in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of lukewarmness and coldness and backsliding. We come against confusion and the subtleness of the enemy trying to find a way in this pandemic to let us lose our zeal for God. And we also use the name of Jesus, that all-powerful name, to come against principalities and powers rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the hierarchy of the demonic world. You know, at every level that we can think of, the enemy has a power that will try to fight against the power of God. But no matter what level in the demonic world the enemy comes at us, we want to call the name of Jesus against all principalities, against all powers, against all wicked spirits in high places. But we know that when we use the name of Jesus in our battle, we must get the victory. I want to somebody just go ahead and call the name of Jesus right now. Call his name against every wicked spirit in your life. Call his name against every wicked disease of Egypt in your life. Call his name against every power, every territorial demon, every squatter in your life that is causing you harm and causing you distress and causing you pain. I want you just to call the name of Jesus over that disobedient child, over that reckless boss, over every situation that's causing you fear and torment. Call the name of Jesus for it is his presence, his power, his authority, and his character is who he is. He is the all-powerful God. And when we look at our main text again, you see that David said, I come to you. This is the assurance that we must have this morning. When we, when we see the enemy before us, let us not retreat. Let us not believe that we are defeated before the battle even begins. Ah, Shakoria Masanda. But let us be confident in the name of the Lord of hosts. Let us not retreat because the enemy looks stronger, sounds stronger, has been around for a long time, towers over us, and has stout words. Let us say, listen, you enemy, I know who you are. I'm coming against you. I'm not coming by myself, and I'm coming with my own words, or with my own action, or with my own weapons. I'm coming to you with the weapon that I know, and that is the name of Jesus. The same weapon I use against the lion, the same weapon that I use against the bear. David said, listen, you come to me with what you have. You come with your intimidation. You come with your weapons, but I have something that you don't have. I, we have something that the devil does not have. You know, we believe that there's one God. We do well because the devils believe and tremble. The devil cannot use the name of Jesus in any sincere way. He cannot, cannot. But we have the authority. We have the power. We have, we have been so authorized to use the name of Jesus against every plan of the enemy. For his name brings deliverance. If you look at the scriptures from First Samuel, you saw that because of the name of Jesus, the name of his God, David got the deliverance. He was able to smite the enemy, subdue the enemy, take off the enemy's head. That's what David was able to do. 
and he was able to win the battle and to celebrate the triumph. This is when Saul's army was cowering in fear. But because David was emboldened, David got a, a special anointing when he come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. When you call the name of Jesus, when you believe in the power of his name, you get the deliverance. Your enemy is smitten. The enemy is under your feet. You take off the enemy's head and you complete the victory. This is what we have this morning. We, we also destroy the enemy in the name of Jesus. In Psalms, David says, all nations come past me about Psalm 118 verses 10 to 12. All nations, just think about it, all nations, north, south, east, and west, from every side, they come past me about, they surrounded me, they wanted to see me go down, they wanted to destroy me, they wanted to embarrass me, they want me to remain in my condition, they want me to be negative, they want me to run away and hide, but David said, I'm not going to do that, I won't give them the satisfaction, Holy Ghost, we thank you this morning. I will not give the enemy the satisfaction for letting me go into a corner and be fearful. They come past me, they surround me, they are dominant right now, but in the name of the Lord, not by my own strength, in the name of the Lord, will I destroy them. They come past me about, said David, they come past me about. He repeats it several times to show the gravity of the situation, to show the gravity. When we, repetition in scripture is to show how serious a situation is. And David repeats it four times in just these two verses they, that he was in fact compassed by the enemy, but he kept on in his confidence. But yes, the enemy surrounded me. But somebody ever bought this morning? But in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, that's the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus, I will destroy them. And David uses the comparison of, the, of being compassed about like bees. Now, anybody who has been surrounded by bees know that if you go into a bee's hive or a bee's nest, God help you because they're just buzzing, they're just surrounding you. But David said they are compassed about like bees. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy. No matter how much they're buzzing, no matter how much they're surrounding you, no matter how uncomfortable they make you feel, no matter the danger that they pose, in the name of Jesus, we have to be confident in the name this morning. It's not by our might by, or by our power. We are coming against the enemy. You come to me with your sword. You come to me with your spear. You come to me with your shield. You come to me with your sickness. You come to me with your depression. You come to me with your poverty. But I come to you. I will destroy the enemy in the name of Jesus. And when we say destroy, we mean utterly defeat. We want to utterly defeat the enemy, that there's no trace. When we call the name of Jesus, we must see our enemy has been utterly defeated. We want to end the existence of that depression, of that sickness in our body, of that pain in our heart. We want to totally wipe out that poverty out of our life, that we can pay our bills. We want to completely demolish the walls that the enemy has put around us, that we cannot break through, that we cannot get that victory that we've been searching for. For how long? We want to get back some joy and peace and happiness in our life. We want to be able to go through this period of so much death and destruction and depression around us. My God, if you know, don't know the name of Jesus in this time, the enemy will completely overwhelm you. But we are not going to be overwhelmed. You have come to us, enemy, with all these powerful weapons. But we come, I come to you. We come against you in the name of the Lord. Another powerful attribute of the name of Jesus is that the name of Jesus defends us. And I love that. And we know the scripture well from Psalm 20, verses 1 to 7. And we are need a defense this morning, because we are under attack. If there's ever a time that we are under attack, it is now. And David said, I'm under attack, but the Lord hear me in the day of trouble. And it is the name of the God of Jacob that defends me. So every time I need a defense, I have to call the name of Jesus. Not only does his name defend me, it send me help. And strengthens me and grant me according to my own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. So the name of Jesus defends us and defending is to not only protect from harm or danger, but it's also a legal term to conduct 
the case in a lawsuit. So we are the defendant. We are always being accused by the devil. He's our accuser. And we need something to defend us. We need a stronger force. We need someone to be able to stand in the gap. And when we call on the name of Jesus, we run the accuser. We get justice. It defends us from all the accusations of the enemy. When we call the name of Jesus, we are being triumphant in the case brought against us. We are triumphant against depression. We are triumphant against loss. We are triumphant against failure because our God, the name of our God, defends us, send us help, give us back our rejoicing, give us back our joy. If somebody would just call the name of Jesus in that moment of depression and sadness and say, Lord, defend me from this attack of sadness, defend me from this sick condition, defend me from this weakness in my body, Lord, take my case. Um, you know, sometimes some people go from lawyer to lawyer. Nobody will take their case. But when we have the name of Jesus, he will not turn on our case because he is our representative in this case. When we call the name of Jesus, his name defends us. And not only defends us, but send us help from the, the sanctuary. And we will rejoice in his salvation, David said, because of his defense. And we set up our banners, sign of our victory. The Lord fulfilled all our petitions. And now we know that the Lord saved his anointing. God won't allow the enemy to run rush out of us and keep us down. For his name is a defense. So his name defends us in the time of trouble. Give us the authority to set up our banner. Lord, we want to put up a banner this morning. We want to be able to say I'm healed. We want to be able to say I'm delivered. We want to be able to have a, a song in our heart. Even in the middle of the night, we want to say weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We want to be able to say he turned my morning into dance. We want to put up that victory sign. We want to have a place of trust and confidence. And the name of Jesus gives us that assurance this morning. The devil don't like when we pray and call the name of Jesus. He doesn't like when we say, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And that is why he tries to get us not to use the name. But the name of Jesus is above every other name. Another good thing about the name of Jesus this morning is that our help is in the name of the Lord. Not just any Lord, the Lord. The Lord, and just to make sure we know who we are talking about, the Lord who made heaven and earth. The one and only true and living God. The one that the writer said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's the Lord we're talking about. Our help is in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's his name. He said, I and my father are one. So his name is the same. And if we need help this morning, and I don't know anybody this morning that does not in need of help, that don't need some, some assurance, that don't need to be pulled out of the enemy's net, that don't need a healing or deliverance, that don't need a change in your circumstance. Oh, glory be to the most high God. Who is it this man that does not need help? But when we need help, our help is in the name of the Lord our God. It's in the name of Jesus. And somebody who is in need of assistance this morning, I wanted us to remember that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And we are safe. He's our refuge and our strength. He's our fortress. He's our strong tower. When the enemy comes in like a flood, his spirit lift up a standard against the enemy. David said, I will look, lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is not from the north, from the south or the east or the west. Our help is from our God who made the heavens and the earth. And for salvation, we also need the name of Jesus. Paul to the church at Rome says, in Romans 10 verse 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in Matthew says, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Salvation is not just for our souls, it's also for our entire bodies. It's every part of body, soul, and spirit, whatever area of our life that needs a deliverance. 
we can get it in the name of Jesus. There can be no salvation for our souls outside of the name of Jesus. We have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. We have to be filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. We have to walk in the newness of life. Sprinkling cannot save us. Good works cannot save us. Putting our hands on the radio cannot save us. Joining a Zoom chat cannot save us. But we have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. For it is the name that brings salvation. Not the titles, the name. Go into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It is the name that carries the power. It is the name that carries the authority. It is the name that brings salvation. So all of us that need a salvation this morning, except we do it in the name of Jesus. The enemy is so slick. He's so smart. He's so cunning that he wants to remove the name of Jesus from our language, from our prayer, from our faith. But faith in his name is what made the man get beautiful whole. When they questioned the apostles, how did this man, how did this man who was sitting there at the gate beautiful, how is it that he's healed? And, and the reply was, it's faith in his name had made this man whole. So when we have faith, we don't have faith outside of the name of Jesus. Our faith is in the name. Our salvation is in the name. The deliverance and the miracle is in his name. Whatsoever we do in word or deed, we must do all in the name of Jesus. And why the name? Because the name of Jesus is not equivalent to Buddha or Allah or Selassie or any of those false gods. We don't have any pay any homage to those gods. The name of Jesus is above every name. And not just the name of those gods. It's above the name of every spirit. It's above the name of every sickness. It's above the name of every territorial demon in our life. It's above the name of every contrary demonic force that is attacking our minds and our bodies. The name of Jesus is above every name. Word of God in says, wherefore God has highly exalted him, which is Jesus, and has given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. He covers every part of our atmosphere. The enemy will try to stop our prayers from reaching. But when Daniel tried to stop Daniel's prayer, couldn't stop it because the name of Jesus is above things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. This is the power of the name of Jesus. It's an highly exalted name. Above cancer, above tuberculosis, above diabetes, above failure, above poverty, above confusion, above heart disease, above kidney trouble, above skin condition. The name of Jesus is highly exalted, saying when you call the name of Jesus over your body, over your mind, above mental illness, oh my God, against schizophrenia, mighty God, every condition against multiple sclerosis, the name of Jesus is above that name. And don't, don't let the enemy frighten you with those names, of those conditions that you want to go in a corner and just cry. Fight back with the name of Jesus. You come to me with a sword and spear and shield. You come against me with these terrifying names of these sicknesses and conditions. You drive the fear into me with the name of these rare disease and condition. Well, I'm coming back. I'm coming against you in the name that is above every name, which is the name, Hashakoya which is the name of Jesus. It's an exalted name. Jesus' name is exalted. It's the only exalted name. It's a name above every name. It's a name at which every knee bows. And it's a name in authority in heaven and the earth. Jesus is far above all principalities. Yes, there are principalities. Yes, there are powers. Yes, there are rulers of darkness. Yes, there are wicked spirits, spiritual wickedness in high places. There is might and dominion. But Jesus is far above, not just above, not just a, a slightly above, 
You know, when we think of our, our situations in our lives and we say, oh my God, this is too much. This is too high. This is too far. This is too serious. This is too, this is too you know, permanent. It's not that God cannot do it. It's not above what God can do before he's far above all principalities. The highest rank in the demonic kingdom. Jesus' name is far above the highest rank in the demonic kingdom. Think about that. That's the highest level in the demonic kingdom, principalities. And God, our oh, God, his name, Jesus, is far above that. So why are we fearing this morning? Why are we stepping back? Why are we looking to the right and to the left? Why are we not embracing the power that we have in the name of Jesus? It's far above. And the word of God says, I said it before, that whatsoever we do in word or deed, our words, our actions, what we say, what we do, how we think, listen, we want to, we want to come at the enemy with a force in the name of the Lord Jesus. And while we are doing that, we want to give thanks to God and the Father by him. By Jesus. See, say it in Jesus' name. Declare your deliverance in Jesus' name. Let the enemy know that you are standing in the name of Jesus. And to conclude this morning, I want us not to be sad this morning. In, 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 our, in our use in the name of Jesus, we also want to glorify his name. You say the enemy a strategy that he wants us to remain sad but when you are using the name of Jesus to fight the enemy it has to be done with a zeal a spiritual excitement an anointing a joy a confidence that God is going to come through for you and so in the in, in the heat of giving the enemy trouble with the name of Jesus you want to give to the Lord glory and strength Give us the glory that is due to his name. The enemy wants to distract the glory that is due to the name of Jesus. But this morning, as we, as we call the name of Jesus over our situations, we also want to glorify his name. We want to let him know that we appreciate him, that we love him, that we understand the power in his name. And the psalmist David said, praise ye the Lord in Psalm 113. All you servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Don't praise the name of the condition. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't praise the name of the demonic force attacking the Lord. We just have fail every time. Don't praise failure. Praise the name of the Lord. Say the name of Jesus over the failure. Lord, things hardy. Don't praise the name of hardness. Praise your success and say, Lord, you promised that you bless my bread, you bless my water, and you take sickness out of my midst. We spend too much time praising the name of the enemy. We want to spend time praising the name of the Lord, elevating the name. David said, listen, you come to me with your sword and your spear and your shield. I come against you in the name. David praised the name. And so David got the victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody bless up the name of Jesus from this time forth, even forevermore, from the moment you get up in the morning until the sun goes down, you're going to praise the name of the Lord. You're going to be like a Jesus freak, a Jesus name freak. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the evening, Jesus in the noonday. When you go in the car, it's Jesus. When you're on the bus, it's Jesus. When you're walking on the street, in the name of Jesus. The angel of the Lord encamped round about us that fear him and deliver us him out of all of the plans of the enemy. Jesus preserved my going out. Jesus preserved my coming in. Jesus from in the moment I open my eyes in the morning when I lay my head to rest, I am gonna give your name praise. We want to take out every vocabulary that, that exalts the name of the enemy and put in our vocabulary a praise for the name of Jesus. Remember that the name of Jesus represents his character, his presence, his power. And his authority. We have a powerful weapon against the enemy this morning, and we want to use it in the name of Jesus. God bless you this morning. God go with you. Let us just, just use his name against every plan of the enemy this morning. The enemy has come at us strongly. It's had a very difficult time. But they've come past us about with so many different things. But in the name of Jesus, we destroy the enemy. God bless your saints in Jesus' name.
Bless you, sir. Um, our leaders are just asking.